Okay, for those of you who, you who have not played this before, this is a one to five player game, typically rated for ages 12 and up. It plays in about 90 minutes. Your first game will take longer, Be just because it's a different style of mechanic, but it's pretty straightforward in how it works. Setup has quite a few little pieces, um, but it's very not super difficult to do. It is considered a work replacement game, but in this instance, it is cards as work replacement. I set the box off to the side. Uh, there you go. You can see it right there. So we've got the board. Let me verify which side does that play. This is a lot of unfolding to do. Come on, unfold the right way. Don't catch. There we go. Uh, is this the... Player count is this side. I can never remember. Four to five players. Okay. If I need to flip it over. Uh, one to three right there. Let's see how well I can fit this on to a screen. It's going to be a little tight, but I think I can make it work. Squeeze it down to the bottom so then I have room for my personal stuff up here so y'all can really see how it plays. I'll go over uh, the setup. All right. As you know, most of y'all, I like to play blues. So I'll be playing blues today. Now the other color options are white, red, kind of a lavender and orange. But I'll be playing as the blues right there. So I won't pull the rest out. Um, so everyone also gets one of these boards with their color match on it. Of course, we all need blue. Now, this box has a very simple insert. A little bit of cardboard. Thanks for the bottom. The main board on top. A lot of Ziploc bags. So, if you're not into the Ziploc bag thing and you prefer a nicer insert, it's not there. But I'm sure there's someone who has made a very nice insert for it somewhere online. I do not know who them. Right, so this is Gugong. Uh, you let's see the best way to do it. Does that fit on screen? I can make it fit. Yay, having cameras on adjustable arms. I will say this one above the board is pretty close to its max extent at the moment so it may be hard to see everything but gives you enough to see my main board let me read off what this game is about based on the back of the box so it says china 1570 the country is under the reign of the Long King Emperor of the Ming Dynasty. He is trying his best to eradicate the incessant corruption plaguing the country. But the officials working inside the walls of the Forbidden City, now called Gugong, have found a way to receive bribes without getting noticed. The exchange of gifts. You take on the role of a prominent Chinese family, trying to raise its influence through bribery and cunning tactics. Travel throughout China to collect taxes. Help reconstruct the Great Wall. Gather precious jade. Benefit from special decrees. Sail along the Grand Canal. Use intrigue against your opponents. And ultimately, try to get an audience with the Longing Emperor himself. Do you have what it takes to outsmart your rivals? Found out in Gugong. Now, I do apologize if I mispronounced any of that, especially the name of the Emperor. Um, it is spelled L-O-N-G-Q-I-N-G. -G. Um, so if I pronounced it wrong, I do apologize. And it, uh, and do forgive me if I did. Uh, we will not need this. This is the first player token. Single player. You don't need it. We'll need the three dice. Uh, we will need... I have to remember where they go. It's been a while since I've set this up solo. But it is still enjoyable to play, no matter what. 
Make sure the board's flat. Don't need those extra pieces. Okay, let's start off with these. They should be shuffled upside down. And then we'll end up placing them on the board around the Great Canal. These are bonuses you can pick up throughout the game. I guess they place face down, I believe they're face. They're placed face up, but they are randomly done. So kind of this unique shape. Any that don't fit onto these empty slots go into stacks in the corners. These are little bonuses, kind of quick, simple, fast actions you can take as you move to these locations. You can collect so many, do, do the special things. I'll probably have to look at the rules several times as I play since it's been a little while since I've played, but this for a while was at least one of my top five games. Um, maybe more for the unique way it handles worker placement and that it's not as straightforward as most. It's a little bit of resource collection, worker placement, card management, a good balance of multiple styles of play. Um, so we've got these little stacks in these corners. Let me get the shape right. There's one, there's corners. And we get these out. Now I'm probably not setting this up in the most efficient manner, fastest manner, but we're just hanging out, chatting. So all of these, these are called the decree tiles. On the back have one, two, or three dots on them. So you will want to separate by the number of dots first, which is what I'm doing. So looking at the back of them, you can see the number of dots. And then we end up randomly selecting two from each stack to use for the game. Or of course, if you so choose, you could choose specific ones that you really want like to play with or that are easier for teaching. All depends on what you would like to do. So we'll shuffle. So they go on the board out here. You'll see that there's one, two, and three dot spaces. So we'll go for those spaces. And, the, and these are ways you can earn points at the end of the game too, based on things you've done, uh, places you've reached. Here's the twos. I'll have to probably confirm what each of these does, but that's okay. There we go. I'm going to pour out my blue pieces for now. with some boats the horseman that starts on the open out here we have our there's a down here intrigue influence general scoring starts at zero we have a person that's trying to work up the steps and you do have to make it to the top of the steps by the end of the game or you can't win at all I've seen people some people kind of just completely ignore that, which is not a good option. Okay, let's get these jade tokens out. Jade's going to go over here. Some of these spots have an exact number. The earlier you get some jade, the cheaper they are. So if you look 
right here we have cost two, three, four, and then five for the remaining during the game. Use this. Refine the cards. Let me make sure with the solo setup. Solo variant. There's the cards right there. The solo automa allows a single player to play Gugong against an AI opponent named Ming. M E N G. Using a deck of automa cards. Several adjustments to gameplay. These rules are designed to maintain a similar level of player action. Ming will typically play like a normal player, with a few exceptions. As a master courier, his gifts may always be exchanged for the full actions, regardless of the printed value. Moreover, his well-trained servants will often wait until the end of the day to further his plans, adding a twilight phase. Uh, okay, so let's see what the setup board should be set up for a normal two-player game. With these exceptions, shuffle the seven gift cards marked with that style of fan. Okay, let me find those to make sure. So the blank zero fans. So once I find these, I'll show them off. So since it's multiplayer, um, depending on who goes first, or second or third or last, there's these fans at the top corner of these cards that slowly fill in. So let me show you like, it's a little hard to see. This one has a one in the fan filled in. Then you have fans that have two filled in. These basically are starting hands based on what which player you are in the starting order. So in this case for a solo, it says take this, the ones not filled in, blanks. And randomly pick one. Remember the number you picked. Place the seven gift cards. So I'm randomly picking the one. Just drew it. And remember the number you picked. Place the seven gift cards randomly on the game board. And place Ming's double servant next to the card with the number you picked. During the entire game, Ming will focus on this action. After playing a few times, you may wish to choose Ming's focus for a game yourself. So then, these seven cards, basically the board start in a typical game, we place onto these spaces. Oh, so Ming will be focused on the one right there. Uh-oh. This could mess with us. Uh, place the seven gift cards randomly. Place Ming's double servant. Does Ming have a... I guess Ming is just one of the random colors. Did I make a mistake and pull out a game I haven't played in too long? Maybe. Let me know. Okay, so we have Ming's cards right here. All these blue background ones. We shuffle them. Oh, so he's gonna get a full player board. Okay. Oof. Maybe it wasn't a great idea to pull this out. Maybe more to put it. I remember. I uh, will make do. I'll uh, pull on a board. He can be purple, pink, lavender, whatever you want to call it. So I'll set these down to the side. Set those on the board for now until we determine otherwise. Because he will get his own board, which you'll kind of see. I don't want to push it too off to the side. I want you to be able to see my board. So Ming is gonna have the pink purple boats. So it said, place Ming's 
double server, which in this game you have cubes that are servants that move around for you. But you can earn a double. So it says take his double, place it here. So he's focused on that action. So he's gonna have his horse out there. He's gonna have some uh, uh, this down here. He can score against me then. And he can advance on this board just like I can. It's gonna be all his cubes over there. Take all his cards. There's all the basic travel tokens. I've done that. Not the bonus. Choose the two sets of cards you play with. You have three options four and the five, the two and the three, the one and the two. Okay, well, there's his cards for now. Uh, let's just play the one twos. We got ones, we got twos. So thrust aside. So as you'll see, I'll have some one cards, uh, the one fan in the upper corner. Ming, we'll start with the twos in the upper corner right there. Put those on his board. So we shuffled Ming's cards and placed them face down next to his play board. Uh, play his over here so I can reach. Shuffle the Automo deck. Oh, so his actual cards we need to shuffle. So there's his actual cards. And then his Automo deck. Place it first down next to the player board. Players will... Easy game. Use only one special Automo card instead of two, two cards in total. Yeah, I should only use one of those. I'm going to take one of those special ones out. So it's a little bit easier. New servant to my third neutral color. Oh my. Well, I guess he gets red neutrals. Uh, if Ming starts with five gift cards, he only has four. Okay, I need to finish setting up standard stuff. I set up the cards, I set up those pieces, those pieces. First player marker. Sure. Uh, then we do need the first player marker. I think I put it. In the box. Yes, in the box. And then in my mind here. I've only been streaming three hours. Three and a half. It's not like I've been streaming all day. Mm. What did I do with it? I don't remember. Whatever. I'll survive. I'll just use that one. So this is the day tracker, day one. Get the destiny die ready. 
which will be rolling. Okay, um, so we have the travel section, we have Great Wall, Jade, Intrigue, Palace, Decrees, Grand Canal at the bottom. Uh, travelers, place all the players' travelers next to the board. The travel will be used to visit travel locations, so we got the travelers up here. We got our envoy at the bottom of the palace. Check their Grand Canal ships next to our boards. Check one star player medal. Comes here. Intrigue markers are down here. Check. Starting players marker at the bottom. So since I'll be first, we'll do that. Uh, VP markers, start player marker, which I put somewhere. One double servant, which goes on our board as such right there until you earn it. Uh, first round, we're going to start with six servants. So we have six workers on the board. Um, during the game, we can spend and earn more. Put those off to the side. So there's gift cards. We've placed the seven randomly. There's got the jade, got the decree tiles out, player boards. Yep, yep. Check, check. Game overview is played in four rounds, uh, representing four days. Each day consists of three phases. Morning phase, where players prepare the game for the day. Day phase, where players perform multiple actions. Night phase, players check if they have successfully matched. So typically, uh, you would figure out who's first player for the round, refill the map um, as we pick these up, more come out each round. Uh, we're going to end up rolling the dice, which we'll do now for the first round. Do it right in the middle. So, fives and a seven. So they just go right here. So these are important in that cards that you have in your deck at the end of the round with those numbers score help you score okay uh execute decrees yeah so the de decrees sometimes they score you every round if you have gotten a servant under those locations they help you score for the next rounds uh, each round we're going to get more workers back. Uh, first round we get more than the future round, so spend them wisely or find ways to earn more throughout the game. Uh, day phase. Day phase players perform various actions by exchanging gift cards with their uh, with the officials working in the, in the city, represented by the seven card locations. So beginning with start player, going back and forth, you would typically play one card and perform the actions. Now the trick about the cards is some of the cards have extra actions and some of the locations have extra actions. Now because I chose starting player and I have certain numbers that ha don't have extra actions on them. So let's go over how you play a card. At the beginning of your turn you must exchange one card from your hand with a gift card on the game board. If your gift card has a higher value than the value of the card that you'd like to choose on the board, you may freely exchange. So, for example, this four right here, it's a little hard to see. It's just a hair off screen. Maybe I can adjust this a hair. Maybe that'll help see it a little bit better. So there is a four over here. So, if I wanted to play where that four is, I could play a five. Immediately exchange the, the two cards, pick up the four, place the five down. A four would go to my discard pile for a future round. Because basically anything I pick up this round, I get to use the next round. So there's planning ahead in that. Um, if it has a higher value, uh, no problem. If your card has a lower or equal value than the card you choose on the board, you may exchange them if you first remove two workers from your pool to your general supply. 
So currently we have six in our pool, general supply. So I'd basically spend two workers to up the value uh, uh, to basically exchange for any card I wanted. Or I could discard any other card from my hand onto my board in my discard pile. So maybe I want to really hold on to card for the next round. Then I could do it that way as well. Or you can exchange the gift card without performing any actions. And you would skip the perform actions. But actions are the most powerful part of this game. So you don't want to skip it too often. Uh, the exception is the number one value card can be exchanged freely with the gift card value numbered nine. It is the kind of the way it rotates through the whole deck. Uh, you would place your gift card you took from the game board face down onto your discard pile on your player board. And it becomes your new hand for the next day after you're done. So keep that in mind as you pick cards and numbers. You can perform actions as you do this. So after you gift exchange, you may immediately perform the action of the card you placed on the board or the action of the location where you placed your card, or both. If you perform both, the gift card action must be first. So for example, say I wanted to play this two where this one was. I move the one to my, my own board for the future room. Then this card has an action, this location has an action right above it in color. Now, and it describes right below what you can do. This action right here corresponds to a different location. In this instance, I could do the action over here. Now, if I wanted to do both this and this one, I'd have to perform over here and then go to what the location said. So you have to be careful on how you generate resources that way, where you're spending and using, and what you have to do first, order of operations. Um, so each card has a value in the upper left corner, which is the number. The bottom left corner has the action, if any. Some of these cards, like I've shown you, have no action. And the upper right corner was if it, like starting uh, player hands. So if it was a a three fan in a multiplayer game, you'd have the th you'd be the third player to receive. You'd be using that deck allocation. Uh, uh, there's certain I I icons on different locations. Anything in uh, red, you have to take uh, workers from your pool off your board. Uh, if it just has a general X on it, you lose that many. Uh, so you would lose one worker from your ship by moving it to the appropriate space on your player board where it stays for the rest of the game. There's also a move the indicated number of servants from your, uh, workers from your from your pool on your player board to the appropriate space on the game board or your ship. Uh, there's immediate scores, they're scoring at the end of the game, which we can hit as we hit. Uh, so you can travel exchanging a gift. Uh, you can move your travel once typically at the beginning you have not you don't have a start location so you can kind of freely move in either direction and collect one token and immediately gain its benefit. You can remove two servants from your servant pool to remove your traveler twice. First, move your traveler one step, collect the token, and then repeat. First time you choose the action A or B. Place your traveler on any space on the map with travel token. So at the very beginning of the game, we can choose anywhere those first ones to start with. As you collect traveler tokens at the top of your board, you can exchange so many for certain benefits. And that can be done any time. So you can exchange them for workers or points or even jade. Um, but there is a limit on how many of those you can hold at once. So uh, turn them in at the appropriate time. traveling uh, we have different tokens we, we can go over what they do as we hit them the great wall allows you to place workers on the wall 
once it hits a certain spot on the wall, it triggers it. Um, when it's triggered, uh, immediately execute the wall scoring and intrigue benefits depending on the number of players. Uh, the great wall scores uh, with the most servants on the wall receives three points and moves their envoy one step up the palace track. In case of a tie, use the intrigue tag as a tiebreaker. Then the same player returns all their servants from the wall to the general supply and fill up new spaces by moving remaining servants to the left. And next players may receive intrigue benefits, um, which are here. If you have enough intrigue, you can turn in those for a benefit. Jade, you can perform basically clicked Jade by turning in so many workers. Uh, Jade generates VP at the end of the game. Um, which there is a on the bottom of your player board gives you the basically escalating scale. Um, so it really is only extremely helpful if you collect a lot of it. Uh, intrigue, which is down here. Yeah. Hmm. We're going to take the track where you can spend extra workers to advance even farther up. Tiebreakers are based on markers on top. Palace of Heavenly Purity. That's the middle palace. Uh, advance your envoys uh, up the track by one. You can remove extra workers from your pool to move up farther. When you get to the eighth and final step of the track, first one there can get additional bonus points and so on from there. Uh, we have certain decrees. Uh, to obtain one, return the number of certain uh, workers from your pool. Uh, if, a, if someone already had a worker there, then it kind of costs you extra to be able to go there. Uh, some have immediate points, some have in-game points, and then some have a round of bonuses as well. Now keep in mind you can only obtain each degree once per game. So you can't double up on a decree. Grand Canal down here, uh, you can place servants on a ship or move a ship. Uh, you can let's see because there's rewards as you get to certain locations. If you let your trip uh, travel far enough and then disembark See. So you may claim a reward if your ship had three uh, workers in place on a harbor uh, and reached a harbor with the reward that you'd like to receive. To do so, take one worker from the ship, place it next to the corresponding harbor reward. It's still available. You may only take the reward, return your ship to, next, uh, to your player board. Uh, so if you end up earning your double uh, worker, it counts as two for certain things, kind of like if you go to the Great Wall or if it's on the ship. So it can be helpful in that way to earn some bonuses down there. Uh, the night phase is kind of resetting things, earning points for cards in your discard pile that match the dice rolled. We also move the ships in the end of the game. After de four days, we do final scoring. You receive VP for decrees. Uh, you score the wall one more time. Uh, score based on arrival at the palace, and then your jade is extra scoring. So you do have a limit on number of workers totally you can pull in, so be spending them before you earn them to a certain extent. And then we'll see how the solo works. It's been a while. So I have my cards, of course, which I'll show you those right there. From the morning phase, so uh, proceeds as normal. 
Ming will receive the start player marker if he has the next takes the creed. Yeah, so we start before him. Yeah, we, we begin the game as start player. Day phase. During the day phase, as long as Ming has gift cards remaining, he will take his turn. Revealing cards from Ottawa, exchanging cards. Okay. Uh, uh, okay. I got bust up the energy drink. Got the yawns. Two hours left of streaming tonight. So many notifications on my phone. They may alone. Let me play games. <laughs> okay, so we go first. Now, most games I've played, I've really tended to focus up here. Especially knowing that they will. There's going to be a lot of movement happening there. Uh... I always focus on, A, you have to guarantee you get all the way up this track. And being up first gets you a few extra points. And we got what? A two. A four. They both have actions. Nine and five don't have actions. Now, keep in mind... As the Automa or the players play, they will change the numbers on the board currently. So sometimes it benefits you, sometimes it will hurt and make it harder. So you have to kind of gauge wisely when you're going to trigger certain things. Okay, so I think I'm going to start this game now. Realize I want fives and sevens in my Discord pile. I'm holding a five. There's a five on the board, which would be nice to pick up. There's a seven on the board, which would be nice to pick up. Fives are a good middle-of-the-pack number for the next round. They're not the worst. But you also tend to want ones that have the actions on them that will benefit you or play into your game plan the most. So typically, so I'm holding four cards. He probably has, Automa has four or five cards. I think it's four. So we're probably playing, because there's what, one, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven on the board. I'm holding a two, four, five, nine, Probably means that Automa has the three, six, seven, eight. Just the way it's set up. That's they try to even out, have give you different numbers. Some low, some high. I have the, really the benefit of the nine, but it's also no additional action. So gauging when to use it is critical. So, to start the game, here's what I'm going to do. Mm. Getting that two out of the way early isn't bad. Pushes that one onto the board for the nine, which I'll end up be placing out. So, I, I like a good way to cycle back into the nine for multiple options. And it plays into my general game plan of playing up top here. So we'll make sure what these different tokens do that we end up picking up. 
Um, like stuff like this gives us more workers, which is really nice. Uh, this allows us to advance up the palace steps. Uh, we got immediate points. We can advance our intrigue. We can basically, I believe this is discard a seven or higher for an immediate jade. Here we go. Yeah, there's uh, gaining workers, there's moving your envoy at the palace, moving your intrigue, discarding a gift card of value seven or higher from your hand to receive a jade, immediate points, exchange a card from your hand or discard power with uh, card on the board. Uh, you can take one of your discard gift cards back into your hand, which is always an amazing option. Because a card back into your hand is basically a free action. And that action on the one card is a decree. Do I want to spend decree stuff early though? Cost me a worker. Worker, two workers, two workers. On top of. Because we have a lot of these pick up discards. And then a lot of the extra workers up top. Mm. Great wall is nice for some quick points in the middle of the game, but I don't think I want to go that direction. So I think what I want to do, I might push this pretty significantly. Cycle into that discard system that's laying there pretty close together. Move the entry, move that. Oh, what is that one? Take a worker from the general supply place in one of your ships on the Grand Canal. I won't do that one. Okay, so if you're watching along, I know I talk and yak and AP for those who know what analysis process is because I, when you're playing solo, you can overthink it as much as you want. This is how you really learn games and learn strategies is this is when you have the time to do it as opposed to when you're playing with people and you don't want to waste their time. Um... Don't want to do that, don't want to do that. Two, let me do that, but leave that too wide open. Ship that pretty fast. Getting an extra card from that supply. Where did I, did I not put those cards up? I should have had these cards out. Yeah, you're supposed to have a separate deck of cards set out that you can earn during the game. It's one thing I didn't do. And instead of the fan, they have the super easy to identify yin yang symbol in the top corner as opposed to a fan, which you can kind of see on that right there. So I'll shuffle that deck. I do hope everyone is doing well today. If you're watching along, if you're lurking, chatting, just hanging out, listening in the background, 
I hope you're having a wonderful day and that this weekend you had some time to relax with family or friends or even alone if that's what you chose be it playing games or other hobbies of your choice that bring you joy I hope you had some time to do that this weekend and that your Monday wasn't too difficult and that you're able to get some rest and not be stressed about the week that you have something to look forward to for the rest of the week be it playing a game visiting a friend or maybe watching something special I'm going to put these special cards where I can reach them over here and I will because I do like the option of being able to draw a card at some point that's one of the bonuses with the ship um, but I'll probably do that later so I think I'm going to play really hard into that cycle system because that's what place so many good options having workers is always nice but not always critical it's that cycle card action it's going to be so hard to improve on yeah I'm going to do it make sure I read this right yeah so I'm going to place this right here that means this one we go to my discard face down. We to place this guy. He's gonna start traveling. And because I probably want to do a little bit of block action. Uh, I'll, yeah, I'll let this kind of determine. That right there. I'm going to take that to the top of my board as you can see right here. Now if this card had had an action on it I could have chosen to do an action at a different location uh, but it didn't so instead I get to uh, I move on to the choice of performing the action at the location I placed the card. In this case it was moving my, my little horse guy the token I picked up was to pick up a card from my discard pile, which I just placed. So that allows me to basically pick up the card I just put there, knowing I can cycle through that, but that gives me the action on that one card this round, too. And knowing it's a 9 I just placed there, I can basically play that one into the back in the exact same spot, recycling the action again, giving me a little bit extra time to play through this. So let's make sure we get these solo rules right now. So in a day phase, reveal the top card of the Anma deck and his top gift card. So let's see what he has. He has a two. So with that two, uh, we reveal the top card of the Anma deck, which in this case is this right here. Let's see if it's a little bit easier to see here. This indicates a few things. So the top portion of the card will indicate the official location where Ming will exchange his gift card. So he's looking at the location that has the boats. So down here. Uh, the bottom of the Automa card can be ignored for now. We will exchange the revealed gift card with the one in the location shown. Placing the gift card that was taken into the, uh, the Automa's discard pile on the playboard. The values of the cards are irrelevant. Oh, so he can... The Automa can basically take any number, regardless of what. That's going to be good to keep an eye out for. Does not need to pay servants or discard an additional card to do... Uh, Ming will take the card and location actions no matter what. Uh, Automo, uh, Ming will take the card action on the played gift card or gain the bonus 
workers if depicted and if if able if the card contains the swap cards benefit don't apply but they would instead gain a point so that card place uh, allows for the which location is that entry location so if the entry location it would move up by one taking start player token themselves And then they will also do the action at the location. And let's verify if they do anything special when at these locations. So one at the, going to Intrigue. Okay, just the one. If at the it is if traveling the Grand Canal, they'll put one of their workers on the ship. But they will not manually move. Only advance at night. Okay, so we take one of their ships, one of the workers. They start here at the end. With one worker on the ship. Okay. And then after they do that, stack the play on the card face up in your card pile of cards played this day. Okay. Doing that. Whenever a man needs a card to draw an automo deck to empty or shuffle this card play, uh, from previous days, but leave automo cards for current day set aside. When both players run out of cards, the day phase is over. Okay. So let's see what I can do now. Well, I knew I was going to cycle into that. They played a low card down there, which will help me out a little bit. I can advance. Uh, playing that one. Allows me to entry uh, decree out, costing one plus one, exchanging cards, and I discard for something in my hand. That wouldn't be a bad option. It's a once per day. That's a level one decree of immediately score three points if the morning phase. A uh, card from Discord to game board. Second one is two points. In each morning phase, you may score one score, uh, move one worker. to a ship. It's not a bad way to do ships. That one is... Anytime I did that action, I pay one to do the action again. Immediate three points when you perform the Great Wall, you place an extra servant. Or I have the option of that one, which is. Immediate four points when you perform the decree action, you may remove one servant and one worker fewer than indicated. Not bad one to start with. Okay, alrighty then. It cost me worker, so I have to cycle it in again. Wouldn't be hard to do. 
Yep, let's do it. So while I'm thinking about it, I'm gonna go and do this. Play the one. One can always beat the nine. Nine goes to that discard. Option on the card itself would have to be performed first if I want to perform it. It's the decree card or decree location. Decree is spend the number of workers. Uh, a worker plus the work number of workers indicated on the decree. So basically one plus number of workers there, I believe. Or no, it's just one additional. Someone's already made it. We'll make sure. It's been a while since I played. To get the decree, to return the number of workers from your pool to your supply as depicted on the decree, plus one extra for each of your opponent's servants. And then place one on the decree. Uh, one, seven, ten, uh, Okay, yeah. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go for to save myself decrees. Make other ones cheaper. Because it's basically just what it shows. Plus if anyone was already there. Uh this is spin two. So two of my workers come off my board and one goes to the decree. This allows me to do these other ones cheaper now in the future. And then now I get the choice to perform an action based on this location, which is I can move the horse guy once. Well, I either start working my way up the palace steps, go get some workers. Or I pull cards from my discard again. Let me see if you can travel through empty spaces. I can remember that. I don't want the palace steps. I want travel. Yeah, so you get to ignore other travelers and empty spaces so you can jump stuff okay so that means I can backtrack and then move back again so yes I'm going to step back taking that discard option to pull this card back into my hand again and then we see what card they have they have a seven and they're gonna go to the jade. So they're automatically going to switch this three for seven. The card itself has no action. The jade location is turn in workers. Uh, they should have had six workers at the beginning as they spent one. They're going to turn in workers for jade. Oh, but correctly, they perform the action as listed. If it's the day phase, which it currently is, uh, they remove servants from the, their pool to buy the cheapest available jade, provided they have enough. Yes, yeah, so and the cheapest jade is two. We need two for two workers. Off, oh, out. Okay. I don't mind that at all. Brings us back to us again. And remember, we want fives and sevens in our Discord if possible.
Yeah, I'm gonna go full risk mode and do this. Place the two to cover this one. Like I said, I like the travel section the most when done correctly. Playing this, I have the option to go to the Great Wall. Um, I'm gonna place just one for now because I'm a little low on workers. Um, but I'll go ahead and turn in two for a worker. I can turn in two of these I've already earned for a worker. Set those aside. Um, and then I can travel. I'm gonna travel, skipping blanks to do the pick up a discard. Get that. Get that. Okay, let's see what card. Uh, Automa has an eight. Let's see where they're going with it. Go on to the location with that symbol, which is out here. If there's an action on the card, they would perform it, but they don't. So they've already picked up at least a seven. So I need to be mindful of that. They may have already taken that. Five, two. Oh, they're going to be some in, in scoring for this round. So I need to watch that. Uh, no action for the card, but action for the location. They will move up the one. I don't think they tried to do more than that. Yeah, I don't think they spend extra workers. Yeah, because we're in the day phase, not twilight. some extra action. Yeah, I gotta get in as much as possible. Okay, now I'm gonna start trying to get those numbers back. To my side, that two is not a bad option. I'm also looking ahead to the symbols on the cards I'm picking up and what they allow me to do next round. And then the order that you play your cards is also kind of critical because if you play all your high cards first, it gets harder to play your low cards. So playing some low ones out first would typically help an opponent, but in this case, it being the autumn up plays, no matter what the number is, I might as well play low first. And, oh, that's not bad at all. Pick up that. Well, I was going to pick that back up. Because I won't have as many workers in. Play into that decree of being cheaper. Play some workers. Place from the board. Place extra. Oh, I should have scored four points on Michael earlier on that, so I got four points already. What I'll do, because I don't mind getting that six, but it means I have to stop this cycle over here. Whatever I do next, I can't beat unless I stay low. Yeah, I'll do it. It's a good time to do it. Play the four here. Takes the two to here. On the card, it allows me to advance up here. I'm not going to spend extra workers to do it. And then because I played up here, I can move my horse. I'm going to jump to this one. Allows me to move this again. 
And I'll go ahead and turn these in for workers. Okay, so let's see what they have in store for us. They're going to be trading in a four at the Great Wall location. They get that. They're going to place into the boat. Verify which one they do try to do first. With the boats, they place one worker on an existing ship if available, or would start a new ship so they have a worker for the ship. Yeah, but will not move it forward on their own. Okay, so that was the ship, and now he, they attempt to do this action, which is the Great Wall, and they will place one worker on the wall. Easy enough, easy peasy. Okay, so now that's a little bit of incentive to play into the wall a little bit more, now that they're on it. Intrigue, I could boat. Could, I could pick up the boat card. Wall out. The next one. I think I should keep into my full-fledged worker mode because that allows me to do a lot of extra actions in the next rounds. And remember, I want fives and sevens. Five is going to be doubling up, so I could really do the discard five to grab it a, a different card. Which I don't. Five first. They're out of moves. Do you have a day phase? So yeah, he's out of gift cards, so that means I just continue playing until I'm done for the round. Which will be nice. So that means I can really plan a couple of steps. So like I could go, I could take the four with that eye, so I can bring the one and the five back to my hand. I don't typically play the Jade games. I don't care about the Jade right now. I have the workers, I think. That's my easiest option, as long as I have a worker left to do it. Cost me zero. Uh, one to place, one to place, two. I just want to do it. One, two. Oh, I'm going to 
play the decree of Monopoly. So if I play that tomorrow, cycle, cycle decree gets me that. I'll double the decree on that. Okay, so I'd be able to play my one here. I'd have to discard another card from my hand. So I'm gonna save my five for that. So that means I can take the six to there. One, I can perform the decree action from the card first. Which, when I place one on this, I'm gonna score two. And two, perform the action of the decree itself allowing me to place here for free because these would typically one each this allows me to pay one less so it's just placing not actually costing me anything that would be that turn place this nine here taking the four because I don't know has le nothing no cards left so out of turns for the round no no action on the card but I can move this and move it over to here skipping blanks allowing me to do the ship action placing one on a ship or start a new ship Ships always jump to the first point of space. Goes to here. That's all I have now. So now the special Automa stuff is all these cards that the Automa used. It uses a Twilight. Before the night phase. So turn the discord pile of automobile cards from the day face down. One at a time, reveal each card and take the bottom action. So the first card is spend a cube to place a cube, which is Make sure I read this right. Okay, so when I have time to reveal the auto card, take the bottom twilight action, provided that Ming has enough workers available or travel tokens that he can exchange for workers. These, these twilight phases generally upgrade the day actions if I had chosen the location's B action with the slight change. Or will gain a free travel step if they acquired a harbor bonus gift card during the twilight phase goes to discard. So in this case, because there's the ship one at the ships, they spend a worker to place a worker. But they only have one worker left, so they don't have enough to do that. So then we'll reveal the next card, which was at the Jade location. This time it's going to move its worker. So let's see in what way that works. So it's going to show their start in the lower right most space and move counterclockwise. 
move into the nearest available token. So the bottom right. Uh, remove two workers from a certain pool to move his trouble or additional space. It's just going to take that one and move up one. Okay, next card at the entry location. Spend a cube to move one additional space that is a worker off his board. Move up again. And then the last one is the great wall spend a cube to place another one. He has no workers left to do so. So then we move on to the night phase. I'll make sure we do this right. The night right. Okay, so when we run out of gift cards, the night phase starts. The two step process check the destiny dice values. All players check whether the value of each card in their discord pile matches the value of the dice. For each match, you may gain one worker from the from your supply and place it in your pool. If two dice have the same number, each matching card will yield two workers. So in this case, my deck has a four six five two. That one five card matches two dice, so that gives me two workers. So let's see what they acquired. They were able to acquire 4735, so that means three workers. The one five card gets them two, just like mine, and then the one seven. And then we've done that. We've got our workers. Then the player with the most matches also receives three points. So in this case, the automated head got three points, one, two, three. Uh, and moves up their envoy one step. So they're not tied with me on the steps as well. Uh, we shift all ships forward once. They float down the water. So you do want to attempt to claim rewards before you float off to sea. At the bottom. Because once you have a full ship, you can claim a reward, remove your ship, get the reward for it. Okay, so we start the next round. So every round we figure out who's first, which in this case is the Automa. We put the first player thing back down here. We refill token spaces, which I believe is just where we are not standing. So you do have to be mindful. You you don't know what's going to come out. So don't get stuck too far off away from things you wanted before. And we're going to re-roll the dice. So this time we rolled a three, a three, and a six. Now we check for these down here. Oh oh, I'll go. I didn't get my. I had four, two plus three, six, nine. Should be at nine already. Uh, okay, so during the uh, sunrise morning phase, at the beginning of it, is when these trigger, which we're doing right now. So any of these that trigger currently, I'm on both of these. I can place a worker order is important. Because we execute the decrees and then receive new. Yeah, so I, I would have to make sure I have enough workers before I gain new ones for the next round. But this allows me to place a worker on a boat. Which I have a boat. And this one allows me to exchange a card from my hand to the 
with one on the board. So I'm going to use that ability to change out this one into my hand. And put the two on the board. Remember we are looking to get a threes and a six by the end of the round into our discard pile. Currently none of those are on the board. Six in my hand. But that's about it. So this will not be the easiest option. Probably was not my best move for that exchange, but we'll see how it works out. And now let's see what we got to shuffle their cards and we'll start with the automatic cards. So their first card is going to be a four under the board. And they've revealed the Jade location. So automatically they're going to take that 7, place the 4 at the Jade, discard that card. Oh, we should have received more workers. We each get 4 for the round automatically. Uh, okay, uh, we're doing this. It is going to attempt to move up that because it can, because the card it placed and spend workers for the cheapest jade spends two yep. so then uh, okay so what I had in mind was playing the one there would allow me to decree for cheap And one worker that is two additional. I think that's draw two additional. Counts as two tiles when trading in. Okay, counts as two when trading in, not draw two additional. That's a good bonus for workers, not bad. It's gonna go that way. I don't care about that one. I'm just skip over to that. Not a big deal. Not unless I want first place. Or first action. So instead, I will. Well, because I really want threes and six. Not up. Well, main reason I took this one so I could replace this nine. The nine down. I can perform a decree action if I choose to. Yeah, I'm gonna spend two workers. So one to place. 2 minus 1 is 1 for the cost to place a decree, place onto that decree. And then I can move this guy. Since I'm down here, I'll move here and up to here, take this. It's going to count as a double. I'm going to go ahead and immediately turn it in for a worker. So let's see what they got next. They have a 5 that they're going to place at the steps which they're going to form the great wall placing one on the wall Good. and form here going up the steps next up I don't do that I could take first not a big deal get a worker isn't super strong yet Here's what I got going in my hand. That's six. I'm gonna be able to pick back up. 
it's going to be hard to do. But it will give me a worker automatically, no matter where I go. I think my best option, because I want to go up the wall. I'm going to do this now so I can plan ahead. Place the down here. Take the two. It allows me to advance at the wall. I'm not going to spend extra workers. I'm going to place a worker on a ship. Immediately claim the bonus because I have a full ship. Well, let me draw a card. And this is from the extra card, so I get an extra card to my hand, so basically an extra card to play for the rest of the game. It was a five. Okay. Uh, eh, not what I wanted, but it'll do. So, Autumn is back up. They're going to have a three to play. They're going to play two, the Traveler. So, they're going to do this. They'll automatically take that one, no matter what. They're going to perform the action of trading a card. Let's see what they're supposed to do with that, with that symbol. Because it's a special scenario on that one. Oh, he gains one point instead of exchanging cards. Okay, I can deal with that. He's going to travel counterclockwise to receive benefits. He's going to do this one, going up the entry track. He's going to do this. I believe that will, that's all he'll do. So nice that he dropped a three for me. Uh, do I want to pull the intrigue? I just don't want him to advance at the intrigue. I don't want him to place the wall. I will play the five here, taking the three. First along to advance my intrigue. One, taking first player back. Not that's a huge deal. And also allowing my traveler to move. I want to work out. We don't want intrigue. Worker. 
do that here. Gains me a worker immediately. I'm going to spin the two for a worker. Brings us back to Automa. They're going to be playing the seven at the Traveler. So he wouldn't have gone up. I would have gone up to three. Because day one he considered to have one match. Day two, two, three. Th okay. So he really would have only gained. He would have had two less servants. server next there for their focus I have not seen what, what the point of the focus is oh because if we draw that card, that's why so he travels he replaces the seven with the five does this he's gonna try to do that action here Move up one. He's gonna travel to this. Move up again. Gets that. <coughs> During the twilight, they would remove two. Okay, that makes sense. Do I want to get another ship on board? Yeah. Getting a ship on the board. Red, let me travel it. Get more cards faster. Oh, I should have done this because I've got that benefit. Can only do that twice. Jump my boat past them. Uh, place one server on one of the ships and option move to the next. Okay, yeah, so we can do a jump ability. So I think what I want to do here, play this, take that, no card action, spend, or spend one to plus two. So I'm going to go ship one, add to the ship, and go ahead and move the ship as well. Uh, 
they're done with actions. I'm going full risky business. Here, take the five back. Can a reward of a worker. Spend a worker for my pool to place two. I'm going to trigger that boat immediately. Pull it back. Put one of those workers here to draw a card. I drew a six. Can I discard a card to hold on to it? Is the big question. Is it worth it? Because that would give me one worker and three points. I already have two. You must exchange one card from your hand on the game board if it's higher value, low value. Okay, so I have to play the card, no matter what. But that's fine. I can play the six. They won't be picking it up. Except, what would I like to do then? I know I can trigger my wall. Go up the wall. The double wall step. Spinning even more. Could go there, spend one, plus two. Really trigger the great wall. Get points for that. Go up the steps. I've triggered. It allows me to spin that for a worker back. It gets a worker back, one worker. I've stepped that twice. Plus three points. Plus a worker back. Versus just straight up double stepping, but three workers. Over there, I could jump around. Place one on the wall. It would trigger what happens on ties off the wall. Most on the wall is three. In case of tie, use the intrigue track as a tiebreaker. Then the same player returns off. So they would break tie. I don't want to have any points though. I want a double wall. I could two steps. Wall trigger workers and trigger up two points. Don't need it. Yep. If I could full on to crew now, that doesn't. We have four, three, two, three, five, nine, twelve, plus three. I triple doing that. Oh, I should be at fifteen. I missed scoring that one. So, what happens when you talk to yourself? Miss scoring. Okay, so what I'm gonna do. Not really 
So I'm going to do this. Place your, take this. First I can move up. I'm going to pay one just to place two. Trigger the wall because it hits the one to two player marker. I have max. All of mine will drop off. Shift over. I get three points. One, two, three. I can move up here. All these come back. Now we have a chance to spend. Oh, we're spending the one for a worker. Let's see what this automa does when this proves. Uh, great wall. Uh, meaning to uh, entry benefit to gain one jade of its entry marker. So at least uh, seven. It is not. Or a single servant if it is at least one step up. So I'll step back one and get a worker. Okay. So I've triggered the wall, did that, paid for that. So now let's go to Twilight. Let's see what they do now. First off, it's going to move. Do this. And place one on the wall. Two of these because the rules for a worker. Next up, it's going to remove two workers to step up the steps and intrigue up one. Next, it will, would attempt to remove two workers to move its traveler. It doesn't have two workers. Next, it tries to remove two workers. Two travel does not hmm. okay so it's considered to have two matches for this round because we're going down in my face okay let's see what I got I'm considered to have two matches it's considered to have two matches automatically even though it has none Numerous. Okay, so they're going to gain two. I'm going to gain one, two, like we talked about uh, during this. Whoever has the max gets three points and steps up. Break tie here, so it breaks tie, goes up three. Which kind of sucks. So I need to focus on the steps next, potentially. Well, it's only two point difference. I think I'll be okay. As long as I get all the way up. Okay, and then we shift ships forward once. Come back to the morning. Replace this. I'll be first player this time. Uh, refill these spots. Worker placement. Spend for Jade. Worker. Uh, place on a ship. Okay, I can make do with that. Okay, so now we go to rolling the dice. Uh, we got a nine, a five, 
and an eight. Okay, can deal with that. Uh, check these. The morning I can place a worker on a ship if I choose to. I can also exchange a card from my hand to one from the board. I'm sitting with a two, three, four, four, five, nine. At least one of these fours is probably too many. But then again, the actions aren't bad. Because there are some exchange actions and not. Oh, that five is not what I want to see. the five there. Remember, I'm first player this time. This allows me to play the six back right on that Gana worker and immediately start shifting my ship if I choose to. Okay, so now we're going to advance this. We both get four workers. And I'm first player as we mentioned. Okay, so a couple of critical things I want to Riverboat for points this round. I want to also advance up the track pretty quickly. If possible. Oh, uh, is there six, seven, four, two, five, eight, five? Ooh, I could change another card if I wanted to. I don't care about the entry track as much. I'll get the two down. Well, thank you for the follow, chipped blue tile. I appreciate it. Uh, if you don't know, I am Jaybird the Word. I like to play games and spread joy, hoping that you leave with a smile on your face whenever you join in. Tonight is my first night streaming as an affiliate Twitch streamer, because I just finally was able to hit it just last week and get it all set up. So I'm playing a few extra games tonight. I was streaming for a little bit longer than usual. Most Monday nights I stream from about 8 to 10 playing solo games you can play along with or tell me the moves you'd like to play, you would like me to try to attempt. Help me with the strategy. Uh, Friday nights I do Unboxing the Week at 6 p.m. Eastern where I hang out with chat and unbox a game or two from my collection that are new to me games. I have close to 40 to 50 games to unbox. So thanks for hanging out with me today for dropping by giving me the follow and thanks again and thanks for the congrats as well i hope your monday has gone great and that you had a wonderful weekend uh let me know how you've been doing if you played anything this weekend played anything today or you have any games you have coming up that you look forward to i am currently playing gugong i'm playing the solo mode against the automa uh, you can kind of see my my personal board right here automa is off to the side a little bit kind of ran out of space but of course we have the main board right here I just started into the third of four day phases. So if I have cards in my hand, I'm deciding what move or wh where I want to go next. Um, I'm not sure if you know the game or not. Feel free to ask questions. More than happy to kind of tell you what's going on, how it plays. And general, uh, kind of my general play style is I like to teach games. So I kind of walk through how it works and I'll play through the game. So yeah, feel free to ask questions, hang out, let me know how you're doing, talk about games, talk about favorites, ask questions about me, get to know me. I like to get to know you as well. Really get to just hang out and spread some joy. Hopefully making your day better. So currently I'm deciding where I want to go. Typically in this game, you want to play a higher card than a card that's out there otherwise it costs you a little bit extra it is considered a worker placement game because you use workers to perform extra actions but the cards in your hand also act as your workers for where you can go and then the, these workers called servants you can use extra to perform additional things so they have uh, some 
icons on the bottom of the cards, which reference different locations. So when you play a card down, you can perform the action on the card, referencing whatever location that it, it shows. And you can also perform the action of the location you played it to. So sometimes you can double up for two actions at the same location, or you can kind of split it, performing, do, doing different things around the board. Goal of the game, have the most points at the end of the game. This time it's against the Automa. The key is in the middle of the board, there are is the palace steps. If you don't get to the top at, by the end of the game, you can not win. Basically, you're disqualified. Uh, currently only a couple of steps away. Uh, as long as you pay attention to it, it's not too hard to get all the way up. But for those who don't pay attention, you can easily forget about it. Uh, we have travelers that give little bonus tokens as you move around. Collect jade for an increasing value. We have decrees that can give you immediate or in-game bonuses down the river for game bonuses, which I've done a couple times to gain some extra cards into my hand, give me extra actions during the during the round. We have intrigue, which is basically a tiebreaker mechanic. We have the Great Wall, which is kind of immediate scoring um, when it triggers. So I'm trying to decide what kind of stuff I want to trigger right now. And I have ways to gain another worker to work up my work up the steps to work into the the river. So if you've played the before, feel free to get say what kind of advice or how you would play it. If you've not played before, let me know. So I'm just looking at my numbers because I have a two, three, four, four, six, nine. So I'm kind of trying to determine how I will play that versus what the board has. The thing about the Automa, they don't worry about what numbers are on the board as much. So they don't always have to play higher. So you can play it, play in a little bit more than a regular game because a regular game players will focus on going low to high or not setting someone else up. Now I typically enjoy traveling around because all the quick bonuses um, I did set myself up for some river actions. So no, no one ever plays? Oh, that's not a problem at all. Um, do you have any questions about what you see? I know it's kind of a lot to walk into. Um, I'll show you the cover of it real quick so it's easier to see the name. So this is Gugong. Um, kind of the theme is the Chinese emperor, but uh, you're trying to influence the emperor by exchanging gifts, which are represented on the cards. And so how you trade in those gifts influences and gives you prestige in the game. It's typically a one to five player game. On the box it says about 90 minutes, which is typically true if everyone knows how to play. And of course doesn't have too much analysis paralysis thinking too long. A solo game I set up about hour, hour and a half ago myself, but I'm also learning the Automa system. So it kind of balances out. Of course, it takes a little bit longer when you're learning how to play as the Automa Andrews relearning, because it's been a while since I played this myself. But I have set myself up nicely with some early points. I'll be planning to try to hit at least over here one more time, because I can score points for every one of those I've already hit. I can get some quick points over here with if I get my boat here. So I think, uh, what can I do to pick up that two? And also these dice, the five, eight, nine, if the cards you end up picking up, they go to your discard pile for the next and use them for the next round. Um, if the cards that you end up picking and have your in your discard pile match these numbers, you get additional workers back. So it's a good way to kind of plan ahead for extra workers. So seeing that there's a five on the board, I could plan to get, pick up those fives for the next round, guaranteeing me an extra worker and movement. So with that in mind, I will likely play into that option because I also need to work up this track. So you play a higher card and 
it's straightforward easy you don't have to spend anything extra if i want to play the same or lower card i would have to take a card from my hand discard it or pay some extra workers to be able to play it but since i play a higher card take the card that was there put it in my discard pile for the next round then i can perform the action on the card in this case i get a worker and then you can perform the action at the location in this case i can automatically move up one or i can spend two workers from my pool up here and move up twice and move up my entry which this entry can trigger and you can get extra workers spent if the wall triggers and you're on the wall when it triggers so i may want to consider getting onto the wall as well in a little bit um i know i want to get up all the way on this i think i've been getting more points because it's only a two point difference in this game if I'm first or not, so I'm not going to rush up the wall to beat them. I'm going to focus on saving my workers for other actions at this moment. So that would be my turn. So next up we have Automa. They're going to reveal their top card. It's over here. They have their discard pile from the last round. They're going to reveal a two. They're going to place a two on the board no matter what. And then they have the actual cards that tell them what to do. This card's going to flip over. Tells it where to go. So in this case that symbol match over here on the board. They don't care what number it's replacing. They're just going to straight up replace as part of the automobile rule. Take that card to a new discard pile for the next round. And then, based on their rules, they will perform the action on the card using the workers they have over here. They currently have seven workers, so they take one of those, put it on the boat, and they can earn a bonus. Now, for the bonus of where they're located, it says that they automatically claim a reward once they have the three workers, regardless of where they are. They will receive an additional card for their first and second reward, or only the first time, um, if they start with five cards. So there is a stack of extra cards that basically can give us extra actions. So because of that right there, the first time this boat comes off for them and they're going to earn an extra card so that means next round they're going to have an extra card in their deck to play and do an extra action which could be good it could be bad we'll see what happens when it occurs so then it brings it back to uh well first we did the card action next they get to do the actual location action and for the automa at the decree location they use their workers to get a decree at their normal cost they select one according to the following rules when taking the decree action on any particular day he'll attempt to obtain a decree at the same level as the current day so this is day three they'll try to obtain a level three decree on day three and four so one of these two between the two uh they obtain the cheaper one if uh, if both are, or any are unoccupied, they will obtain the bottom one. So they're both the same cost, so it will go for that bottom one. So these decrees have a cost in the bottom corner. You have to spend that many workers from your pool, and then place one other worker onto it. So in this case, it's going to cost them three workers, and place one on the pool. That leaves them with two workers left in their pool. Now, if I want to go to that location, it's going to cost me one additional on top of it because they already have something there. So then next up, back to my turn. Hopefully I can make use of this because they already blocked me. I do have a lot of workers now. But they may have helped me out a little bit. Because I like this little trick of... I'm going to play to where they actually just went. Place one and a three instead of a two. A two goes to my pile. This action is exchange a card for my hand with one on the board. And so this is kind of cool in that you can set yourself up for a cheaper, easier action. So... I'm going to trade in this two, replace the six, put the six in my hand. 
Well, let me make sure if that's from my hand. That may be my Discord pile. I thought it was my hand. It may be my Discord pile. Yeah, the black. Maybe Discord. I may be wrong. It's been a while since I've tried that action. A card from your hand or discard pile with the card from the game board. If you use a card from your discard pile, place it in the discard pile. Oh yeah, so I had the choice. If I wanted to use something from a change the discard pile one. But I had a... Well, I just put a two there. No, I like that six, because that's... No? Actually, I'm not going to do that. I like that option of, from my discard pile, I'm going to take that two I picked up, place it with that five, making it easier to go down to the harbor again, and that five matches the die roll. And then for the decree location, I have the choice to go to another decree. I have these options here. So since I already have one of these decrees making it cheaper to go to some of these, I can, instead of spending the three plus the one to place, it could be spend two and place one. Or I could spend two plus one and then place one. So spend three and place one. If I spent three to place one, I technically still have enough for the other one to come back to and there's another round now granted both of these are end game scoring I don't have to do these right now but I don't mind doing it while I can because I have the workers to do the actions I'm going to do the cheaper one spending two to place one above same amount of points cheaper for me at the moment so it's guaranteed eight points at the end of the game okay so then this brings us back to the armor. We're going to see what card they're going to be placing. They're going to be placing a 1 under the board, which will be helpful for us since it's a low number. They've revealed their special ability card with the brick. Their big brick double worker appears, so that means they want to travel and do the travel action. It's something they specialize in doing. I'll verify that's what happens when it's revealed. Uh, yeah, so they specialized it. There we go. Special Automa card. Before the game started, we placed this in a location. During this phase, when a special armor card is drawn, exchange gift cards as normal with the location that's indicated by the double servant. Yes. But when executing both the card action and the location, make always chooses option B without paying its normal cost by using workers from the general supply if possible. This results in these actions. If traveling, the traveler moves two steps for free. So we know this one. It's going to go here. Seven goes here. First off, the decree spot. Uh, we've talked about this one already. It is day three. It already has one on this, so it's going to attempt to do this. It costs it three, four to place one. It does not have enough, actually, so it can't do it. So it's going to move two travel spaces now. Let's go one. And it's going to gain two workers because of that. And because it continues to move clockwise it will then step all the way over to here I believe yeah it skips over that central step and it actually gets that another double worker that may be the bane that hurts the candle of the bell oh man I'm blanking on phrases because that may have just hurt, made it worse for me but we'll see what happens. Uh, that completes its turn. Back to my turn. These cards are here. But we did try to set ourselves up for some easier movement actions because we have workers right now. Advance. Do that. Spend an extra nope.
Yep. So I'm going to play this four on top of this two, taking the two to my hand or de or sorry, discard. The picture on the card is actually the Great Canal, so I get to do the Great Canal action. So that's going to allow me to place a worker on my boat, advance it if I choose to. I will. advance it and then I can do the canal action again for where I'm at I'm going to place the cube and I'm going to let it advance now the trick to this I can advance it one more later and get the bonus of my big worker this big worker basically covers two in a boat or two at the great wall which is nice okay so now we move back to the Automa they have cards to shuffle, which we're going to shuffle the cards they did not play, leaving the two set aside. We've already played this round. We'll reveal another one, and they have reveal another card. They're going to be placing a five at ooh, the travel location. So they're going to do this, place that there. They're going to travel again. Uh, this one they don't can't perform that action so instead they get a point No one does on the other face. So he does try to get Jade by discarding his top card, which is that one, to get Jade from a pool. Well, that's going to help him get some points at the end. Back to my turn. So currently I have a 9 2 4 left. So I could prance around like he's been doing. do that I could turn in some workers for Jade. I don't want to do that because you really have to go all in on Jade. I could place one at the wall to trigger the wall. I'd give him points though. I would not have enough entry to make it worth. Oh yeah I'm kind of stuck in this corner now. I don't really want to travel. So I want to save that for next round then, so I don't want to travel right now. I could go for the entry, take first player, I could go and start jumping up that track. I don't have enough workers to do that over there, so I could go to the wall. I could only get one on it, doesn't help. Or I could just play into starting the boats, keep playing into the boat system, and start myself another boat, which might be my best option. Because I'll be a, a quick cycle next round to help me with that. Yeah, so I'm going to do that. Yeah, so here's what I'm going to do. Uh, to play the same number or lower, I could discard a card from my hand. Discard that. To play the same number, which is four. Icon on, is up the steps for the boating. I'm going to place a worker on a boat. It has to be the first open space. Uh, they are out of cards to place, so the Anna does not continue to go. So we go again. We have a card. That is a nine, allowing us to go basically anywhere we want. We could pick up 
of eight. Get a little bit of intrigue if we want to go into first player next round. Because we talked about not wanting to travel until next round. Or oh, wait, no. I can place it on a boat now. That is not a bad option. Get this nine, get the five into my hip. Now's the time to do it. Now that I have a boat down. Nine's higher than five. Move, uh, no action on the card. Location action. Move my uh, horse. Get this up to here. That action is place a worker on a boat. Which I'll do. Okay. So that is all my actions. Now we move into what's called the twilight phase, which is the automa that goes. They go through their automa cards one by one. First, they move their worker this way, allowing to place a worker on a ship. So they start a new ship. They go to here. Um, during this phase, they also step uh, whenever if you can ever exchange for Jade he must do so immediately so he's gonna change all these all six of these for one Jade which is helpful for us that he's going all in on Jade but that will be a 10 point swing from him at the end of the game that's okay. Uh, so he did that. Next up, we reveal this. He's going to spend two workers to advance. Which moves him up the steps. Gets him that one. His next one is going to be one free step uh, on this, which is two points for him. So that ends the twilight. Now we go to the night phase where we check for matching numbers. Uh, considering it's round three, end of round three, he's considered to have three matches, no matter what's in his deck. I'll have to check what mine is. But because he has three matches, he's going to automatically get three more workers. Shuffle his discard, done that. Let's see what kind of matches I had. I had a 5, a 5, and another 5. So I get 3 matches. That's 3 workers. I only have 2 available. Put them down. That's all I can get right now. Oh. What? Oh, because I have them all on decrees. That's a little rough. I need to get some of these workers back. Okay, I have a way to do it. Okay, uh, and then next up, because we both had three, tiebreakers entry, uh, this track, he's highest, so he's going to get the three points. One, two, three, he's up here first, so he's going to be seven points at the end of the game. But that's okay, I didn't care if he got there first, because I can still get the five points. Oh, but every time it tries to move him up, he's going to get a point, which I've done that before. It's a good way to just bank on extra points as you're playing at the end, last round. And so now we've done that. We advance ships completely. One step. And so anytime you're allowed to, if you have a full ship, you can trade in for the bonus. I'm trading in this one down here. Full ship for my big worker bonus. Which is nice. I do have to spend a worker, place it, showing I've taken it. And then we go to the beginning. Uh, first didn't change, I was first that round, which is helpful that I held on to it. He didn't take it. 
Uh, we replace these if there's enough available, hopefully. There's none, so we're gonna take and shuffle, shuffle the ones we've turned in. Covering any of these empty spots. That no one is standing on, at least. Turn these all face down create a new stack again. These should not have to fill again because this is going to be the last um, day of the game, basically the last full game round. Once we run out of cards, we'll end it. Okay, we've already rolled the dice. Okay, so we got a three, eight, and nine. We checked uh, the decrees uh, for the morning stuff. I'm allowed to place one of my workers on a ship, which I'm going to immediately turn in for four points. One, two, three, four. I can also exchange one card from my hand with something on the board. Remember, a lot of fives couple of twos and a four, so I want some higher cards if possible. Remember, I want to advance up, I want to get some points. I want to at least go to the decree place once, but I don't need to hit it once, so wherever I go there, I don't want to hit the decree. So if I have it in my hand, I don't want to have to go. I'm holding a five with no action on it, so it's really not a great card to be holding. So at this phase of the game, I found it's very beneficial to get to the top of the steps and start hitting your bonuses like scoring on the, the canal. So triggering canals a lot is helpful. So I think what I'll do, I'll, because I only have so many workers as well to do that with. I'll trade this two for the four. I'll be okay with that. Because I can play the four on top of where the two was. And then now we get we advance this track. We each get four workers, which is exactly what I have planned ahead. Uh, but they the Automa currently has nine workers to mess with, so they could try to do a lot this round. I am first again. So like I talked about, probably try to trigger the water a lot run up the steps before I can't. But one of the little tricks I've learned is to do something like well my traveler could get me a worker so I want to do that later. I don't have a one unless I can pick it up later unless he plays it. Four I can play fives on. I can play over there. I'll have to do that once. Yeah, so what I'm going to do, like I talked about, pick this up so I can do this. Play over the two. Play the four, which has a, the water on it. Let's me place a boat with a worker. Then, because I'm at the location, I can place another worker and advance the boat. I'm going to use my double worker, advance it to the four spot, and immediately score it. Uh, the double worker stays off to the side. I'm going to use that one to score that one. So I can do that double four, four point thing one more time. One, two, three, four. So this is kind of a fun strategy at the end of the game. Really rack up the points as you have the workers for it. Brings us to the Adama again. Uh, they're going to place the one, this could help us. We're gonna place it on the steps. We're gonna go here. Take that six over there. So first they're gonna perform decree. If possible, it's day four. They're here. They're gonna spend, they have this one, so they're gonna try to go here. 
it's going to be one, two, three, four, and then place one. So we're going to spend four workers. This will help us out. Drop one here. That is going to be eight points for them at the end of the game. Okay, so, and then they're going to perform this action to advance up the steps since they can't, they get a point. And then that leaves us with what we talked about before. We have that cost us one, two, three, four, one to place. One, two, three. Oh, they cost all of our workers for eight points. Whew. Tough. Because then I would need more workers back, but by spending the workers first, you can get the workers back a little bit easier. But I had to have to travel twice, which I think can I pull that off? Not that direction. Oh, I'd have to skip over that. Turning for a worker. Yes, I can do that. Okay. So that's worth doing. Give me that worker. Yes, okay, so to guarantee these points, I'm going to do this. Play the four on top of that three. Three goes over here, which will help me for scoring potential at the end. Uh, advance up this track. Nice. Guaranteed points. Trigger this. I can spend. This would typically cost three. One less, two, plus the one here, three again. Spend three to place one to guarantee score. Okay, um, I've done that, done that. And it brings us to Automa again. They're gonna end up placing a five on the board for us at the travel location. So they will exchange this, put this five for the nine put that there. They're going to try to do this action, which is place on the Great Wall. Ugh, ugh, ugh. Uh, that's going to trigger the wall. All those come off. They have the map, so they get three points. One, two, three. They go up here. At the top already gets another point. They had stuff here they can spend when it triggers the Great Wall. If they had seven, they would have gotten jade, but they're not, so they're going to spend one for a worker. And that, now, and then they also move the traveler to here, which would, that's a two count piece when trading in. But they only trade in if they need workers to perform an action. Okay, so next up, we have three fives and a two. So, not as many places to go with Toru. And I need a worker if I want to do anything with it. So, walls not get intrigues. Eh. So, so. So, at this point, I kind of have to do something where I go to. I want to move over there. Two's going to be hard to play. Yeah, so what I'm going to do to play a 5 here on top of the 5, I'm going to discard the 2. 5 goes there. 5 is going to go here. The blank 5 for now. Uh, no action, but I can move 1 for a worker. So I automatically get a worker. I'm going to get my double worker. Spin the 2 to get another worker. So I have enough to play with now. Automa again will be placing a two somewhere on the board for us at the Great Wall. We're going to play to the Great Wall. Exchange that to that. Two becomes here. They play to the Great Wall with their worker. They just play one. They're at the Great Wall, so they do it again. I'm okay with that. And then we said to be able to do that, they would take both cards. Okay, so I can 
do something, but... True, but they would score it. So it's not good for me. Don't want to hurt wallet. Intrigue at first. I want you to lose one point. Doesn't do anything for me there. But for Great Wall, Great Wall. Where's the Great Wall triggers? Immediate or at the end of the player's turn? Because that could be the deciding factor here. Three, four points, but no workers left to play with. Really do anything with. So, hoping to get. Oh, that'd be four points. Four points. Yeah, so same thing. So, I'm going to do it like this. Play onto this two. Allows me to place onto the wall for the card. Place onto the wall for the location. Place my double. Which, let me see how it counts when you stack it onto the wall. Um, yeah, let's make sure this double actually counts like an extra. It's a double server, right? Occupies two space, counts as two workers if you play. Uh, okay, yeah, so it counts as an extra. So yeah, that's going to trigger the wall. Um, I have majority, so mine come off. But I have max, so I get one, two, three points. Plus going up on here gives me another point. Those come up here. If we had intrigue, we can spend there on the wall, so they can spend. They're gonna spend for a worker, because that's their special. I have a card left. They have cards left. They have seven to put on the board at the intrigue. So if they're gonna pull over here, push this down here. That goes there. They're gonna technically get the first player token. Card had nothing. They're gonna. Increase here by one. I'm not doing anything extra. It gives me a five to do something with. I have no workers to do anything. So I can't spend workers as I do this. Um, so in this instance, I have no reason to not just play in the middle here. Plays me to intrigue here and goes up again for points technically. Okay, then uh, they go again. There's another seven. They can put it on board. They're going to the Jade location. They're going to exchange that one. They go up the intrigue track. They buy the cheapest Jade, which is cost. Cost them three. They have exactly three workers by Jade. Oh, that might have give them enough to catch back up. Hopefully not. Okay, I am out of cards. They are out of cards, so we go to their twilight phase. Triggering the card. They want to spend two workers to advance up. They have enough to turn in these for two workers. Spend, uh, they can go up the, here for a point, and then up this. They try to spend two workers, they don't have a way to get two workers, so that's done with. Spend a worker to place a worker, nope. Spend a worker, nope. Advance one for free here on the Intrigue to here. Okay, so let's make sure what happens at the last phase, if it triggers the exact same way. Uh, 
After four complete days, proceed to the final scoring. We're still servants on the Great Wall score as usual. Oh, so that's going to trigger again. Okay. Well, didn't care for that, but it is what it is. Well, first we got to check our piles because they're still scoring based on the dice. 389, I have 1 3, so that'll only be 1. Uh, as an automatic, they automatically get 4 in round 4, so they're going to get the 3 points for that one up again. So that's really 4 points. 1, 2, three, 4. End of the game, we're going to score the wall again. Uh, they're on the wall. They have a max on the wall, so they get 1, 2, 3, plus they try to move up 4 for that. Decrees, uh, we both get 8 points. 1, 2, 3, 4. Five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We both get this one. Uh, this one is two points per decree or on it, which I believe includes itself. Then the game score two VP for each of your servants on the decrees, including this one. So the Automa gets. 2 times 2, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, and then I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 times 2 is 12, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, and then we score for the Great Wall, uh, 7 for them, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and I got 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and then scoring for Jade, I have none. The 5 Jade for 15 points. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. No. Oof, that was rough. So, it's a little hard to see. There's the final score. The Automa beat me by one point. One measly little point. I was so close. So close. Like I said, if you go all in on the Jade, you have a good chance. If you don't go Jade, you really have to push for the rest of it. I had a couple of unlucky draws of tiles coming back out up here that kind of messed with me again. Um, I had a relatively good plan going. Maybe if I pushed a little bit harder down here on the steps, get there first, that would have been a two-point swing. And that would have made the difference right there because that would have had two points more they would have had two points less and i could beat them by a couple of points so that shows you how timing is such a critical aspect of this game um really gauging what cards you have what someone else might have what you may or may not be able to play on a future turn uh it's a little bit harder to gauge with the automat because they can basically play anywhere and whatever they play it, the numbers don't matter. So that's a little bit trickier to gauge. Um, especially when they're pretty much guaranteed to make die matches because they don't count the cards in their hand. They just, each round, they're guaranteed one, two, three, or four based on the round number. So it's a lot harder in the future rounds to beat them on that. Oh, well, I got a little bit fortunate that the decree came out that points for a number of decrees so I could play into that early enough. But as you can see, it wasn't quite effective enough. They got ahead on the Intrigue track early, so they were breaking all the ties on the Great Wall and other places, so it kind of made it hard to make too much headway there. So that's why you saw me making sure I triggered the Great Wall when I had the most, to minimize the tie break. Yeah, that was Goo Gone. Uh, the 1-5 to five player uh, about it says 90 minutes of course you saw that I just was verifying the rules for the, the Automa it's been quite a while like probably a year and a half to two years since I played this game but it was still fun to pull it out on stream replay it again this is from the Game Brewer is who released it there's that right there so you can see what we just played